Um, Amanda asked me to talk about um, shared space in London with, from the practitioner's point of view, uh, with particular reference to lessons learnt from having delivered one of the kind of, as somebody has once said, a laboratory of a project in Ashford, Kent. And um, I have talked about Ashford a lot, so I do apologise if any of you heard me speak about Ashford and seen some of the images. You'll see a few, but I have really stuck to the brief and I'm concentrating on, um, on London. Now, I haven't got my glasses on, so I can't see which is the right button, but hopefully that's it. Right, shared space. Um, first of all, I'm going to define what I mean by shared space because it's been a sort of banded around and it's caused a lot of people a lot of grief. This is what I call shared space. It's a reorganisation of priorities, um, sort of making placemaking from edge to edge, um, whether it's in a street or in a square or whatever. So you'll see here, this is a, a cross-section where we've uh, still got a route, a road with, with narrow curb, uh, low curbs, but before that, this was a ring road. Um, and this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. Shared surface is literally everything gone, no lines, no signs, no traditional road markings, no curbs, no, no nothing. Um, declutter total. Um, and, but both, both types of space, and I actually use the word shared space as a sort of a general, general um, term. These are the sort of things we're aiming to achieve. Uh, Placemaking, uh, it's done by different ways, uh, carriageway width reduction, I won't read all this through, but um, the out outset is to slow traffic down, make the vulnerable feel more comfortable, get people out, you know, on their bikes or walking, uh, and so regenerate an urban area, because you don't regenerate an urban area by driving through it very fast. And of course, Hans Mondermann um, pioneered this in, in Holland. Uh, he maintained that the element of uncertainty that you get by going through a space where you're not sure who has priority that makes it safe, because you're, there's no assumption. And I think that word assumption, which the word assume, I love. And it's the ass out of you and me. I'm sure you know that one. So if you assume that you've got priority, then um, that's, that can lead to danger. Um, so Hans uh, was a great, great, unfortunately he's dead now, but uh, he was a great advocate of this. Now, when I first uh, became a landscape architect, uh, quite a while ago, um, I was working for the GLC, uh, as it was then called, and there were a huge amount of um, estate regeneration programs and stock transfers. And the work, shared space is what we had to do because there was nothing there. You had to, to make all the spaces multifunctional. You had to turn uh, service yards and parking spaces into spaces, amenity spaces. This is... Um, uh, Stafford Cripps Estate, which I remember doing in 1984, so that was quite a while ago. And this is what it looks like today. This was a, just a grotty service yard and entrance, and you had to battle your way through past uh, Paladins, and there was lots of parking. Still park in his space, but it looks a little bit more like a pleasant courtyard. Um, here, as long as you uh, get your swept paths right, get the service access, the fire access right, get the sub-base and the materials right, you know, you can use these spaces, they can become play, they can still be park and they can still be service yards. Now, you try and then, in, this is 80, 80, uh, um, 87 ish, um, you try and do that in the highway, and I, I love the fact you're here, Paul, because, you know, we work well together, <laughs> highway engineers, because it was always a battle. However, it was, shared space was slipping, uh, you know, in under the radar, and, um, Seven Dials, uh, here it is last Saturday, still working really well. Very, very, you know, everybody just taking no notice of the traffic, the traffic driving slowly through, civilised space being used as pure, that is pure shed space, not a curb in sight. And that's been there for some 20 years or so. And in, do, I, do any of you remember the big storms of 87? Yeah? 
I had a feeling that, oh, thank God, I thought I might be one of the oldest people. <laughs> there were a lot more trees in embankment uh, gardens then. And I remember talking to the tree officer because um, this was when Terry Farrell did the Air Rights Building above Charing Cross. And this is Villiers Street. Villiers Street was a little back route. On the right, as you came up out of embankment tube, was a sort of a railings and a shrubbery with lots of trees, and you sort of peered through to get into embankment gardens. But this had become the new front door to the Air Rights Building. So, again, here with me with my, ooh, shared space, but I didn't use that term because it was a really dirty word, um, very frightening. We just took, um, let's see if I've got uh, an image here, paving edge to paving edge, uh, building edge to building edge, we carpeted it in then the, I'm afraid, the ubiquitous um, concrete block, which was pretty trendy then, but um, you'll see that uh, the weight of pedestrians and, you know, you just they all have to share the space. We did have to put in the yellow lines um, in some of the spaces, you know, there's, it's flush curb but, and bollards, yellow lines and bollards, my bet noir, but they, have to go, they had to go in then. But we did get to some sort of unusual elements in with a sort of different curb heights and whatever. But this was done in 87. And so that sort of thing was still happening. Um, I have to just go back. Um, th there was the desire to put paving slabs across the whole of that particular route um, up Villiers Street. And in fact, that's what happened. There was a huge debate about it because marshals were going, no, we cannot have that paving slab with tracking. And Westminster wanted a uh, concrete below sub-base. Anyway, it went in, and I'm afraid... A few, uh, very shortly, it had to be dug up and the old concrete blocks have gone in. So there's a bit of a debate there. Um, and that was the last scheme that Westminster allowed external consultants to deliver. <laughs> um, however, I think it's still, this is some 20, a quarter of a century ago. Isn't that makes me feel ancient? Um, but it's still working very well. Um, all the principles of uh, slowing the traffic down, short visibility space, carriageway narrowing, a, a change of, uh, of material so that as vehicles enter in off Northumberland Avenue, there's a very sort of different, oh, this is different, got to slow down. Also, the highway, the transport plan has helped by uh, stopping the, no, the right turn onto um, the Strand, so that, that, that's where, you know, the, the designers and the the transport plans have to work together. So that has worked. Um, 18 years later, Westminster finally allowed external consultants to deliver another public realm scheme, and this is New, um, New Burlington Place. Again, um, so this, was, this would have been about seven years ago, seven or eight years ago. The word shared space was a dirty word. As soon as I mentioned it, oh, this would be a great scheme for shared space. Nope, couldn't do it. So... Um, we, this was a little, little nasty cut through, um, and it had to become the front door of Crown Estates. So it, it's a, a, this sort of um, uh, back alleyway has to be transformed. I'm afraid what I call plonk art has gone in, uh, but th this, this was, it's good that we've got something there. And it was so carefully placed because there's a swept path that needed to be accommodate a future vehicular entrance. But we had to use curbs and we had to use yellow lines, etc. But we did manage to declutter not too many bollards. But, um, detail there, I love details of bits of paving. Um, only a few years later, in the neighbouring borough, you had this sort of thing happening. And um, obviously the vision for Exhibition Road and the huge debate that's happened. And I was very lucky that at the same time, we were, <coughs> I was involved in the very early stages of this, and um, uh, at the same time was able to build the Ashford project, which, uh, whilst this was still being, uh, going through the long process. Um, and this is it, yes, on Saturday. It, it looks quite like the, uh, doesn't it? If you could take the, 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 um, the hoarding away and everything, it's pretty good, and not a curb in sight. And here they are, you know, they are, they are delivering one of the most trans transformational projects, uh, I think, in London. Apart from, obviously, Trafalgar Square is pretty transformational, but this is amazing because it is a linear street. It's turning a linear street into a 
total shared space. But these are the objectives. Um, and this brings me to lesson one. I'm going to have eight lessons here. Um, the first lesson, to deliver anything like this, you need political support at a high level. You've got um, Councillor Moylan, who, fresh from his success on Kensington High Street, uh, which was just merely taking some barriers away and widening paving and, and really, really decluttering and straightening out crossings. He, he said to, to me, uh, he said, I want fuzzy edges on Exhibition Road. I said, that's great. We would love fuzzy edges. We've had nothing at all. But, but we have problems with engineers telling us we can't do it. He said, leave them to me. And sure enough, he, he's done it. You need political support at a high level so that you can hold the vision and it doesn't get banded around with electioneering. We have it, which brings me to the next one, which is the integrated interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary design team, because you cannot deliver all this without working closely right across the board. And it, it, a bit of shared space has repercussions way, way beyond the area, the context. So um, this is the model for the Ashford project. Um, public artists, engineers, and the, the lead design uh, designers sort of evolve at different stages of the project. We led the design stage, and the engineers led the implementation stage. Uh, media and marketing, very important, because you have to keep that on board. Um, and again, the champions group and the high political stuff. So really, you need that multidisciplinary team. Lesson three, engagement. Uh, getting everybody, the right people uh, on board. Uh, obviously, I know Exhibition Road had huge problems with guide dogs for the blind. Um, we, at Ashford, we did uh, work very closely with the access groups, but they're learning as well. And stuff we put in and changed, like um, putting the tactile paving right across and long swathes of tactile paving, um, when they came back, and because we had several workshops coming back later, they said, oh, well, that doesn't really work. Fortunately, somebody kept a note of, they you know, said, well, this, you did say you wanted that. So I think this is a whole learning process for everybody. Uh, I think the lessons learned here that too much tactile paving can be very confusing. It causes um, repetitive strain injury uh, with long cane users. Uh, I think we went a bit overboard on the Ashford project, but um, uh, it's still... It still is better than um, nothing. And guide dogs, I hope one day, will be trained to uh, not necessarily need a curb and a building edge to walk, walk to follow. Um, mixed messages. This is a classic. <laughs> 40. Um, what, uh, one of the problems is, if you, if you come in with a bit of engineering speak, traditional speak, like a, a, a signalised crossing in a totally new environment, it gives you a message and say, ah, oh. and we've watched the vehicles speed up. They go through, they're doing 20 miles an hour through this space and they see that light and they speed up for it. So even if it's green, hopefully they don't speed up when it's red, but they, they will try and get that green light. So, so the signalised crossings can, I think, um, give a mixed message. Um, we use courtesy crossings, which is just sort of a, a change in, in, uh, in sort of paving material, and they work very well. In fact, so well sometimes. You're standing, having a conversation near somebody, near one of these things, and, and the traffic stops. I kind of crossed the road because I felt that's very nice of them to stop. I'd better cross. But it's, you know, really, those sort of things work because it's an unusual thing, and it creates that kind of element of uncertainty, which is what makes shared space safe. Um, we didn't get it right uh, in uh, Ashford here um, because there's a there's clear line between um, uncertainty and total confusion. Uh, so <laughs> we got something here where uh, we were asked to put in a feeder lane to a car park, and we did. But it we decorated it looking very smart, but it was very confusing. It didn't it wasn't what it what the hell was it? We should have just done nothing total shared one space and they, everyone would have been very unsure and just picked their way through. Instead we had sort of lines and ugh, didn't work. As you can see this has now been retrofitted with, with a sort of a guider feeder lane. So mixed messages, very dangerous, one or the other. 
um, parking strategy, absolutely vital to get the parking strategy on board from the outset. Um, this I took on Saturday. Um, I'm, sh I'm pretty sure this is a temporary arrangement for the residents. Parking can be terribly emotive. We had a project at Gillette Square where we transformed a sort of, a, a sort of an old pa parking space and backwater into a lovely, lovely um, not shared space. It's a it's just this plaza now. But the emotion about losing the revenue from parking meters was tremendous. So that has to be talked about. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with having parking in shared areas. Um, but... Uh, if there isn't any parking and you don't want the parking or you want only loading only, which is what we tried in Ashford, make sure that the enforcement officers are on board and they will enforce day one. Uh, make sure that TfL are on board with you from the outset and I know that they are now far more willing to come to the table because um, from when you're in the design stage, we took a year and a half to get the wording right on some signs and we, it just didn't, wasn't quite right and the enforcement officers would, would not tick it because they knew that they would be sued, uh, blah, blah, blah. So parking happened everywhere, cracked the paving up and, you know, just didn't work. So parking strategy, get it on right, get it right from the outset and get everybody um, on board. And, and that, by the way, the left-hand image was showing that we had what we called the restricted area, so there are no yellow lines anywhere because you only park in designated areas. And, of course, um, that works if you've got the right signs and the right place and the enforcement officers. Um, the other thing is uh, servicing. Uh, it's amazing how it's very easy to underestimate how much rubbish everybody produces. And, um, again, I, I, these are just in South Ken. All this is in South Ken. You know... Why is it that in Denmark, in Copenhagen, they retrofitted an NVAC system? And it's, I know it's expensive, and this is probably not the time of diminishing budgets, etc. but surely the way forward is to find a better way of dealing with our rubbish and our servicing. Um, so that's, that's, let's hope if we're sharing space, let's not share it with our rubbish. <laughs> I mean, just down the road in Regent Street, Hebden Street, Hedden Street, fantastic example. But it's, it, it's easy because servicing is just restricted to, um, uh, I think it's 3am to midnight, isn't it, it says. <laughs> um, great if you're organised and you can just sort of keep these, these seats and planters roll out and it's fantastic, very organised, but we don't have the luxury to do that in all our shared spaces. And, you know, it's... Um, but we could learn a lesson. Services below ground, very, very important. Uh, all these beautiful, elegant paving can be totally ruined if you don't coordinate everything with um, ducts, um, drainage, tree, tree roots. That's an image on the right is a, is a trench that um, there's a, that's actually in Peninsula Square, but trees need air and water and a lot of their roots are in the first 600 of, of the surface. And, um, you know, you see all the pavements being ruined by these great sort of roots coming out and trying to look for, air, for the air, really. Um, and, obviously, you've got to be able to, to drive on top of this stuff, which then compacts the tree roots. So there are ways and means of doing it, and we spend a lot of time detailing how that is done, and, and it takes a lot of space up. So, and, and it has to be organised with all the cables. So below ground servicing is vital to get that right. Um, and finally, last lesson is the ongoing commitment to maintenance and management because you can do the most wonderful schemes. And I've, I've shown to my you know, detriment, really, the, the image on the left is, is um, Elwick Square in Ashford. And on the right is that if you don't keep those sort of surfaces cleaned, you will end up getting a tracking which ends up creating a roadway. And that's the one thing I worry a bit about on Exhibition Road. You've got this lovely, lovely white uh, stone. But what is going to happen? Because the vehicles are controlled by subtle placing of um, uh, 
street furniture, so the vehicles will be going up one particular route. And if they don't keep those cleaned, um, then it'll sort of end up becoming a bit of a mishmash. The other, obviously, I think this on the left, that is usually the bete noir of all of us. You know, we do this wonderful, wonderful paving design, and then something happens, and you get a big blob of tarmac. But I think I saw this being replaced. But even then, um, it, leads to, it would be wonderful if, if that sort of thing didn't have to happen. And again, oh, oil, oil stains from parked cars. Uh, bet no, I know it's sort of minor stuff, but it's, it's, it's what happens. It's, it, it really makes an impact. Um, and of course, collecting the rubbish. Um, so, um, shared surface does work. It, it really helps create civilized spaces and civilized people using them. Traffic slows down. Um, you know, just uh, people feel more comfortable walking. The public realm improves everything. I mean, you can't, this should be the norm. So I hope when Manual, if Manual for Streets 3 is ever written, um, there'll be even wider applications of the principles and places like Exhibition Road and Ashford will be the norm rather than the exception. Right.